One of the most awesome things about Ford, other than this huge tray area that they give you, so whenever you break down on the side of the road, you can put all your parts right here and all your tools, ratchets and everything, works pretty good. One of the things they do with this body style truck, a 2007 and newer, is they give you a little treat. So after about 100,000 miles or even less, it starts bouncing and you think I need shocks, I need leaf springs, I need all this other stuff. And they just put that on there so it just kind of hurts your butt at 100,000. So not only do you get to fix the truck and put all your tools in the front, but they engineered a way to make your butt hurt even 100,000 miles after. And what in the world am I talking about? Well, I'll show you because today's project so my name is Stephen Cox, welcome to my shop. Today's project is a 2010 Ford F-250 with the gasoline motor in it that everybody hates for some reason. And service bed. This is a buddy of mine's truck. As soon as I got to Granberry, he stopped by and he said, hey, uh, I love your videos, watch your videos. Can you fix my stuff? And I said, yep, for money, I will fix your stuff. So we are going to put some cab mount bushings in and let me show you why we're doing that. So if you see that mount right there, there's a big cushion up there. There's one of the cab mount bushings and the bottom one, that's just completely missing. I don't know what you're thinking, but Steven, there's six body mount bushings, actually 12, there's an upper and lower. We'll just say sets of six. There's six body mount bushings on the truck. You don't need all six of them, right? You can have one that's just gone. Let's just make them out of some kind of foam that deteriorates in heat and vibration. It doesn't last for more than like a year or two. Um, but you got, you know, five out of six, it's pretty good. But look at there, Right row. Okay, so we got four out of six, that's all right. But uh-oh, looks like somebody's been there. That's not a factory hose clamp. And I'm pretty sure the factory bushings aren't split from the factory. So, so three out of six? Let's look at the other three. Uh-oh, that's not supposed to be like that. There's another hose clamp. You can't see it, but it's split back here where my finger is. And it's definitely not centered where it's supposed to be. Well, what about, oh, oh. well, what about this, oh man. That one's broken in two. But it's, it's okay, you got five out of six. It's Ford tough. Ford can withstand anything. You only need one lug nut to hold the wheel on on a six lug car, so by that theory, there should be one under here. Let's look. What? Oh my gosh. That one is missing too. So apparently Ford just cannot figure out how to make a cab bushing on any corner of the truck that'll hold up to what you're gonna use the truck for. And I know you guys at home, that's exactly what you wanted. You wanted to buy your 2008 or 2007 a newer truck, brand new, drive it home, and a couple of months later you get a rough ride and you don't know why this truck is running so rough, but it's Ford. So what are we gonna do about it? So we're gonna put on a set of these energy suspension body mount bushings. Looks pretty much like the factory ones other than they're a polyurethane and uh, there's a little casting flash there that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, I'm gonna keep those together though. Got our instructions here from the old energy suspension. And it's actually not really that bad of a job. Uh, I think all you need is like a 16 millimeter socket. If you're at home, you don't have a two post lift to lift the cab up a little bit. You can actually do this with a couple of jacks and jack stands and um, maybe you've got a buddy that can help you. I'm gonna go ahead and crawl underneath the truck. I am not going to use the lift to lift the truck in the air, undo the cab mount bolts and then lift it back down and adjust the lift because that just adds time and ain't nobody got time for that. So I'm gonna set the camera up, crawl underneath the truck. We're gonna loosen some body mount bushing. Before you crawl around and start unloosening or trying to whip these off with your impact, you really, really need to get you some sort of your favorite penetrate loop. I like to use knocker loose. Go around to all the body mount bushings on top of them where the thread, because the bolts go through the bottom and the threads stick out the top, and spray the holy crap out of the top with them with some knocker loops. Because if you don't, you will strip the nut on top and then you're gonna have to put a backup wrench on the top. And it's not that big of a problem if you got a buddy or a good wife or a good girlfriend that'll help you out or boyfriend, I don't judge. Spray them down, let them sit, 
Come back in about five minutes, spray them down again, and then remove these slowly. Do not use an impact because if you use an impact, you're going to strip the bolts and you're going to strip the little nuts out and you're going to have to go buy new bolts and you have to go buy new nuts, go all the way to the Ford dealer. You have to get kicked out of the Ford dealer for drinking too much coffee and free cookies when you're not supposed to be in the service department. So anyway, I'm going to set up the camera and show you guys where to spray your lube. So on the front passenger side, and it does not matter if you have a diesel or gas super duty, they're the same. You can see that nut right down there. I'm shining my flashlight. You can tell I've already sprayed it now knocker loose. Now you've got one there over here on the driver's side. You've got little guy way down there. Right there. You go inside the truck. Now this is a single cab truck, so you've only got six of these bolts. On an extended cab or a four door, you'll have eight. You pull up your floor mat, pull this bushing out, and all you have to do to get this bushing out is just pull it out with your finger. You can jam a uh, flat blade screwdriver underneath there and get it. Um, there's the, the nut right there with the long bolt sticking out. Loop that one, and then behind the cab, there's one right there. And that should be the only time you're going to need to get in the cab of the truck is to do that. That's it. Everything else is going to be from underneath the truck. I'm going to get the camera set up. I'm going to show you how to loosen one side of it. I'm not going to show you how to loosen the other side because it's just the same repetitive process on both sides. If you're confused, uh, just mirror the image and it'll look just like the other side. So I'm gonna crawl underneath and show you guys how to break these loose without stripping anything and the, what I use to do it. So right underneath the front of the cab, gonna need you a 15 millimeter socket, put your ratchet on there and give her a good heave ho to break her loose. So this is the setup I use. It's a 15 millimeter socket, a 12 inch, half inch drive extension. Long handle, um, this is my absolute favorite half inch ratchet, a Proto. And just brace your leg against something and uh, give her old heave ho. So just repeat that on all six bolts. You can use an impact once you feel them kind of loosen up, one of the problems that you're fighting is the paint on top of the threads and very, very tight fitting nuts. So I'm gonna get those busted loose and break out the old impact. Every time you do a job, it always takes a little longer than you expect, except when somebody else has done the job before you, which is the case here. Once we get the rear bushings out, I will show you how I can prove and how you know for a fact that somebody's been in there. But this is the bolt that we're trying to get out. Notice that it has a little taper to it. That is an alignment feature. So when you stick the bolt in, it'll kind of walk that deal over. Focus. So that way when it tightens up, it'll actually walk that hole over and then lighten, line it up. But you can tell there's some Loctite on here. So if you're struggling with these, get you a map gas torch and heat the head of the bolt up only for about 20, 30 seconds and then do it slowly. Do it by hand, do not use an impact. You will gall it. But about ready to try to lift her up and get the old mounts out so we can see got that bushing right there and if you still have bushings left they should pop out relatively easy we might need to spray them down with some knocker loose but it just falls out like that and this is how you can tell if somebody's been in here before because this one was on the top and whatever this is or excuse me this one was on the top and I don't know where they got this bushing from, what it came off of, but um, ultimate fail. You should never have to slit your bushing in half to put it where it needs to go. So this is how they look. This is on the bottom, goes up, clips into there like that. To, in order to replace these with this energy suspension kit, you need to take out this rubber, which is a pain. Just get you a screwdriver, jam it down in there like that, and then try to pry it out. And you can tell this is what happens to the Ford 
body mount bushings is they're this kind of foam that just rots and deteriorates. Um, this is going to be fine for the rears, but the problem with the fronts is this section jams inside of here so hard that you cannot get them back out. That's what I'm worried about is we're going to possibly need these retainers, and you can only buy these retainers from Ford with brand new bushings in them. And to install the energy suspension polyurethane bushings, just set them on here like that. That one will go on top. And there you go. Now, word of the wise, polyurethane is a really, really good material, but it squeaks really, really badly all the time. You'll constantly hear it squeaking. Um, you can put grease around wherever it touches metal, and it'll help for a little while, but it's still gonna squeak. So I'm going to lube it up with grease on the inside, outside, and on the top. Some high temp, probably some rain grease. That way it'll withstand you know, the water splashing up underneath the truck and rubbing it off. Hopefully that'll keep it from squeaking so much, but I'm gonna hope the best. I have never installed energy suspension bushings, body mount bushings, um, or Daystars or S&Bs. I've heard really good things about the S&Bs. I have not really heard good things about the Daystars or the energy suspension, um, or far as what I've read online. Now I've seen both sides. I've read stories from guys using the Daystars, rave about them. I've read guys using the Daystars and hate them. Same thing with energy suspension. I haven't heard of anybody hating the Ford ones other than the fact that they just won't last that long, which I hate, so. So we got all the cab bushings in and all that red stuff on there is some grease. We use our little impact to get it tight. Then we're gonna torque it down with our torque wrench. 85 foot pounds. And that is it for the cab mount bushings. I still need to program two keys because the owner that bought this bought it and it only came with one key, which is a terrible idea for you guys that don't know. I'm going to break out the Autel scan tool, hook up to it, program the two keys, take it on a little test drive, and go pick up the owner. Um, I can tell you that the energy suspension bushings do fit, and they fit well. I don't think they fit quite as well as the factory ones, but they do fit better than the Daystars that I saw, that I saw on a forum. A guy posted, um, they, the Daystars just look terrible. When you put these in, make sure that you torque the bolts. 85 foot pounds, look up the manufacturer spec for your year, might vary year to year. This one's 85. And only time will tell how well these things work because I know the factory foam ones provide a very cushy ride and a very nice ride. If you guys are running around in a Super Duty, 2007 or 2008 and newer rather, and it clunks and it just rides really, really rough, look at your cab mount bushings. You can pretty much see the cab mount bushings just from Looking at the fender over here, when you walk up to a truck, you'll look at that bottom one and you won't see any bushy material at all, any of that foam be gone. So I'm gonna fire up the Autel scan tool, put the plugs back in the floor and re reposition the floor mats and hopefully we can program some keys. So I'm gonna fire up my Autel Maxisys M MS906BT and the BT stands for Bluetooth. All right, we're gonna go to diagnose, Ford, standalone. Got an automatic selection. It's pretty neat because you can hit automatic and then hit read. It'll read the van, punch in all the information for you. Hit okay. And that took a while, but we're gonna go to hot function. Immobilizer keys. Go to pets. Now this is usually gonna take 10 minutes. Now we just have to wait. All right, so what I gotta do is hit okay. 
security access granted. Program an additional ignition key. There should now be an unprogrammed PATS key in the ignition. Turning ignition off could result in losing security access. We're going to put our new key in. Hit OK. Operation in progress has been successful. Do you wish to program another key? Yes. We're going to take this key out. Put our other key in. Program additional key. Hit OK. Alright, that's the new key. This is the first key. We'll call it the master. Alright, we're gonna hit OK. Security X granted. Program additional key. Hit OK. Do this one more time. It doesn't like this key for some reason. Well, I'm not sure what happened, but all three keys work. That's this key. Here's the master key. And the third key. And yeah, they all work. Okay, let's go through here and see what else we have. Throttle cylinder. Can do the oil reset, but I'm not sure if he wants to do that or not. And we're good to go. Pull our dongle out. Hit escape. So pretty quick and painless job. We did struggle a little bit on the front cab mount bolts because normally what happens on these is they actually smash themselves together. That lower mount and the top, upper mount, because there's no bushing on the top anymore, or on the bottom rather, it'll just sit there and vibrate and smash together. A lot of times you have to actually cut those and we were able to pry them loose. Thanks to my Autel MS906BT, we could program the keys to this. If you guys would like to try or buy one of these, they'll be linked down in the description. I have been using SRM for about a year and it's worked fantastic. I've actually sold all of my other scan tools, my automotive scan tools, and just use this Autel. Now, if it's diesel oriented, I use my diesel laptops and that's the name brand, diesel laptops, on anything. But I'm gonna call the customer, go pick him up, Bring him back, he's gonna drop me off and uh, we're gonna be on to another project. So hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. And if you've ever done cab mountain bolts on these and you have any tips on how to get those stinking bolts out without using an impact, put it down in the comments, let me know. Thank you everybody, get out and fix something.